calculate the value of x and y for which the structure will have a maximum area. That is equation 10. Optimization. Let's go ahead and take a look. The diagram below shows the plan for structure which is to be built onto the corner of a cottage. A railing A, B, C, D, E. So let's just demarcate that. A railing A, B, C, D, E is to be constructed around the four edges of the structure. It is given that A, B is equal to D, E is equal to X. So A, B is equal to D, E and they are both equal to X. So here it's safe to put X and here it's also safe to put X because we are told that they are equal to each other and they are both equal to X. B, C is equal to C, D and they are both equal to Y. So we can put Y here and we can put Y there. And the length of the railing must be 30 meters. And then that is the information we have. We have to calculate the value of X and Y for which the structure will have a maximum area. Okay, so the railing should be 30 meters. So let me just highlight uh, the railing, where our railing should be. So A, B, C, D, E should be equals to 30 meters. All right, that is told. Uh, that is what we are told. And then we want to find uh, the maximum area of the structure. We want uh, this area. Let me just use a different color uh, to show you what we are looking for. We want uh, this area. This is the area that we are looking for. Mm. So if we have some hypothetical point here, it should be easy to see that the area of uh <laughs> the space I have highlighted here, the area of uh, the structure, the place I've uh, highlighted there, should be equal to this entire area minus this area. Okay, that should be easy to see. So let's take a look. All right. So if we have a hypothetical point there, then from... We have F here, but now it is highlighted. So let me erase some things so that you can see F. We have F there, and here we have E. So let's determine the length of FE and the length of AF so that we can be able to calculate the area of that part which I've highlighted in light blue. All right. So take a look at this. From here to here is Y. From here to here is x. So clearly from here to here should also be x. So AF AF should be equals to y minus x. AF should be equals to y minus x. So now we have AF that is y minus x. So here we have y minus x. Let's move to EF. Okay, so let me just erase some things before we move to EF. So um, from here to here, we have Y. From A to B, we have Y. So from here to here, that is also Y. So EF, EF should be equals to Y minus X. Okay. So EF is Y minus X. Now I can start erasing some things so that we can have, you know, a bit of clarity. Here we have Y minus X. All right. So we need to calculate the area of the entire structure and then minus the area of uh, this small uh, square that we have. It's a square because uh, the sides are equal to each other. That should be easy to see. So the area of the square. So... Uh, the area of the square is equal to y minus x multiplied by y minus x. Those are the sides. We are easily multiplying them. Okay. And then now um, let's take a look at the bigger structure. The, now let's take a look at the bigger structure. Uh, we know that the railing should give us 30 
meters. The railing should give us 30 meters. What is the railing? AB plus BC plus CD plus DE. So AB plus BC plus CD plus DE should give us 30. So we have X plus Y plus Y plus X being equal to 30. So QX plus 2Y is equal to 30. If we make, uh, we can take 2 as a common factor, or we can just make Y the subject of the formula, we get 30 minus 2X. So Y is equal to 15 minus X. Okay, that is Y in terms of X. Okay, so what does that help us with the problem? Okay, let's calculate the area of uh, the entire the area of this entire structure with our hypothetical point right uh, the area of that uh, bigger structure will be equals to y multiplied by y it will be equals to y multiplied by y and then if we subtract so this is the area of the bigger structure uh, this is the area of the biggest structure and this is the area of uh, the smaller structure right uh, the smaller square that is inside there so to find the area of uh, our this area that I have initially highlighted it should be the area uh, being equals to that of the biggest structure y squared minus that of the more smaller structure uh, which is y minus x multiplied by y minus x uh, that's what we have so the area that we are looking for is equals to y squared so that will be y squared minus so we can go ahead and solve that which is inside uh, the brackets we're gonna get y multiplied by y y squared minus x y minus x y plus x squared yes when we take that out of the brackets we're gonna get the area meaning close to y squared minus y squared that is zero and then we have minus multiplied by minus x y so that is plus x y and then minus multiplied by minus x y once more plus x y and then minus multiplied by x squared that is minus x squared so we have the area being equal to 2xy minus x squared but we know the value we know y in terms of x right it is 15 minus x so we have 2x in place of y 15 minus x minus x squared so the area is equal to 30x minus 2x squared minus x squared so the area will be 30x minus 3x squared this is the area and then now to in order to find the uh, maximum we say if uh, a prime will be equals to minus i uh, will why start with the minus it will be equals to 30 minus 6x I, I think i was i wanted to start with the minus uh, so that I can, uh, the, I can write the constant last. So 30 minus 6x is equals to 0. Minus 6x is equals to minus 30. x is equals to 5. So when x is equals to 5, the area will be a maximum. But we know that y is equals to 15 minus x. So that is 15 minus 5 y is equals to 10 so for the area to be a maximum we need x to be equals to 5 and y to be equals to 10.